Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 22 of the Arianets podcast. My name is Ariel, and I am really happy to be recording today. It is Saturday, February 25th, and there's, there's kind of a lot of things that I want to talk about today in today's video, and today's video is going to be, I feel like it'll be like half, the beginning half will be the normal kind of content for the podcast episodes where I talk about finished objects, what I'm working on, and things that I have planned. I have actually a lot of, pro well, I have a lot of projects that I want to make, but I've decided on some that I really do want to share with you all on here for future plans. And so yeah, second half, I feel like will be like future project plans and also some really exciting things that are coming up. And I also feel like there's a lot of yarn collections coming out very soon. And so I need to, I've been like mentally trying to plan like what I want to get from these, but I've, I usually like write it down. Like I make like a, a like presentation and I add pictures on projects, like pattern ideas that I want to make with the certain yarn because I do, especially for pre or yeah, especially for pre-orders, I do like to make sure I have a plan for the yarn that I'm going to buy. And it just helps me to visually kind of like put all of that in like a PowerPoint presentation type of thing. So I'm pretty excited. I think I will be doing that after I film this video, it's just doing some yarn planning and project planning. So with that, I feel like I just rushed through that beginning, but it's because I'm just excited to talk about it. So, whew, okay, so yeah, regular kind of podcast kind of content starting now. I can show you what I am wearing today, and if you've been watching my previous videos, you might be able to tell that it is also a finished object. So I finally finished the Kelly Crew Neck by Alexi Two of Wands, and the yarn I used for this is from Sorella in the classic sport base in the colorway Jazz in the Park, which is this really, really nice variegated color of greens, blues, pinks, and browns. And so I will stand up and maybe try and stand a little farther back from the camera so you can see it all. Here is the hem. It is a split hem. And oh, and this is a crocheted sweater. This is my very first crocheted sweater. And so that makes it pretty exciting for me that it's finally done. The sleeves are nicely, not oversized, but long. They're, yeah, so if I were to just kind of like let the sleeves go as long as they are, they kind of leave my fingertips out, but I personally like that fit on sleeves. I think it adds to the coziness. And when I'm cold, I do like to kind of just do this with my hands. And so I do like the length of these sleeves and the overall stitch pattern looks really nice. I believe it's called a double herringbone stitch. And yeah, so I think from last week, all I had to do was to finish one more sleeve and then do the collar and then seam the sides. And so this sweater is worked flat. And then after everything is done, you actually just seam up the sides and then down the arm, the sleeve. So that was pretty interesting to do. It wasn't too terribly bad. And I really like how it fits. It is, oh, let me stand up one more time. So I made the size extra small. And final measurements for me, this came out to be 40 inches in circumference, which gives me nine inches of positive ease. So it's also very nice and drapey. I do like the drape and fabric that this created. And yeah, overall, I'm really happy with it. I was, since this was my first crocheted sweater, my main concern with the sweater was I was worried that my gauge would be kind of weird and off. And I was most worried that the sweater was going to end up growing 
too big after blocking it or, you know, washing it. So, you know, I did what I needed to in the beginning. So I made a gauge swatch and I also blocked that. Seemed to be fine, but I did start to get a little more worried as I was in, uh, crocheting this because my gauge was just going all over the place. So I had to rip back some rows and all of that, but I don't think you can really tell in the end product. I think definitely it helped for me to rip back when I kind of noticed my gauge changing. So like it would be either too loose or too tight and you could, if you laid it flat because the body is, the body is like straight, you could tell the widths were kind of changing. And so I'm really happy that I did rip back and make those corrections. And the sleeves were fine, I think because I did them not in like one sitting, but I made sure that I kind of did it. Like when I worked on it, it was, you know, pretty close together in the days. I did start this sweater, I think it was in December last year. So it's been a few months already. But yeah, I'm, you know, I'm done. I've been wearing it since I finished it. And it's been nice and cozy. And... I just, I also, you know, when, while I was working on this, because it's such a, it's worked flat and it's such a large piece of fabric, I started to worry about how it would look on me. Like I wasn't sure how the shaping of the sweater would look, but on, like, yeah, once it was done, finished blocking, finished drying, put it on. I think it looks really cool. It's not, not, I would say necessarily like my color scheme in terms of like, I'm just, I love pink. And that's kind of like where I like to live in the color zone and my things that I, I wear. But this is very much more kind of green. Like there are hints of pink in there. If I can just show up maybe a closer view of this color, which I love. So it's definitely more like of a green, like it's variegated, but it is definitely kind of more green and brown. But I think it's a great way for me to kind of branch out and start wearing different colors. So this is again the Kelly crew neck and it's my first crocheted sweater and I feel really happy with it. I liked working with the yarn. The sport weight was really nice because it wasn't, I still don't know if I can actually tell the difference like when I'm working with it between the sport base and a fingering weight base, but I do feel like it was a nice in between between, you know, between fingering weight and a DK weight yarn, because especially for the few crochet projects that I've done, I don't, I think crochet stitches take up more yarn than knit stitches do. And so sometimes when I'm crocheting something, the, the fabric, resulting fabric sometimes feels a bit thicker than I would prefer for a garment. But for this one, it's actually perfect, I think, in my opinion. I really like it. It's not too thick, and but it still keeps me warm. So isn't that kind of like what every everyone wants in a sweater? So yeah, there's some nice shoulder shaping that's done here. That I had to really kind of like, since crocheting is still like somewhat new, like, you know, I, again, this is my first crocheted full sweater. I still, I had to really make sure I read the instructions and I had to look up how to do things. And so there's some shoulder shaping here. And at first I wasn't really sure what was happening, but I just tried to make sure I followed the instructions and it turned out to be just fine and worked out. So that is again, yeah, the Kelly crew neck and it is what I'm wearing. So I hope that you enjoy that. Um, and yeah, I do have a friend who we've, we also, we talk a lot about yarn and knitting and crocheting, and she's also working on this sweater as well. So just checking in with you. So I did finish my Kelly crew neck. So hopefully, yeah, I, well, yeah, let me know how, how you're doing on yours. So, all right. So that is what I'm wearing and also my first finished object for the week. And I actually have more finished objects this week, I think, or this past week. The main theme for me, I think, was really finishing the projects that I have because 
there are so many new projects that I want to cast on, but I really, I was looking at the list of things in my, I like to, I try my best to add my projects to my Ravelry page so that it's, you know, it keeps track for me. And it's a lot of whips or works in prog progress to have at one time. So this week I was like, you are not casting on another project until you finish something. Ooh, although, okay, I did cast on something new, but I finished it. It's a beanie. So since, since I'm talking about that, let me show that to you, my second finished object. I cast it on and finished a beanie. And it's the one that I talked about last week. It is the Brownstone Beanie by Tori, Tori Knits NYC. It, I believe it came out last Saturday, so it's been out for, the pattern has been out for a week. And when I saw the pictures of it, I knew that I was going to make it and I really wanted to make it right away. And so I bought the pattern as soon as it came out and I cast it on and cast it off. I think it took me two days. I think it took me the weekend, last weekend, to make this. And the yarn I used for this is Woolberry in the Berry Sock Base in the colorway October. And I, I think that, well, I was really excited about this beanie pattern because one, I love, love the other beanie pattern by Tori. And I'm blanking. I feel, why can't I remember it? It's my absolute favorite. Oh, the Manhattan hat. It is my absolute favorite beanie. And so when Tori came out with this design, I knew I was going to like it. And the other great thing was that it uses only one skein of fingering weight yarn. And I have a few, like one or six single skein fingering weight yarn in my stash. And so I think that this would be now that I know that I like beanies, that this would be a great way to use up some of those skeins. And this was one of the skeins that I had. I had no plans for it. I, when I bought the skein, it was just because I really like the color and just bought one skein. So just really happy that it kind of worked out and I could use it for this beanie. And I'll kind of hold this closer. Hopefully the focusing will work better my eyes are covered. So this colorway, I actually bought it from Shop La Mercerie kind of a while ago, probably sometime last year. And I just saw the skin and really liked it. I think it is like a the, the base, it's a variegated and the base is kind of like this gray blue color. And then there's colors of the other colors are like I'm trying to see if there's some nice there's like some green in there with some golden it's almost like an orange yellow it's not really I'm trying to see it in different lights orange orangey brown and then also some some pink in there which is definitely kind of a reason why I got this skein it's because of that added pink in there it's so interesting though because in the skein I couldn't really see the pink but as I knitted it up the, the pink started showing up and so I thought that was really interesting and the this hat has a really really cool construction and so this brim I'll actually unfold it so it's actually knitted with one strand of your fingering weight yarn and you it's knitted in the round and then you fold it so that both sides have, you know, that stock in it, the right side of the stock in it. And then, then you join and then you work double stranded for the rest of the beanie. And I thought that that was so clever and I really wanted to see how that was done. And so definitely get this pattern. I think it's such a great beanie pattern. And let me just put it on so that you can see what it looks like on. Yeah, oh yeah. So this is the brownstone beanie. What else? Oh, I decided to make the size adult small. So with the other beanie patterns, I made the adult medium size, but for this one, I decided to do adult small. I think because the sizing was somewhat like the inch circumference was close, 
ish I forget but the main reason why I did adult small was because I this thing this fingering weight skein of yarn was 400 yards and the the adult small I think was it was a little less than 400 but the adult medium would have been more than 400 yards so just to like be absolutely sure that I wouldn't run out of yarn I went with the adult small and I figured it would at least give me like a maybe a slightly tighter fit but it wouldn't be like too small so I definitely feel it's like a little snug but I think that would be good especially when sometimes you just want a beanie that's like you know you can just kind of sit on your head and you don't really feel any tension and then sometimes you want a beanie that you make sure that's like will stay on your head and so this is definitely that beanie for me and I like the detailing at the top here it looks very similar to the Manhattan hat which I really like and so yeah so this has been this was a fun weekend project last weekend and as I keep saying and I hope no one's getting super annoyed with it but I I love Tori's beanie patterns the Manhattan hat and now the brownstone beanie so I think that my next I'm going to try and wait at least a couple weeks until I cast on another beanie, but we'll see. But I think my next one will be, I'm going to complete the Manhattan hat collection. So I did the bulky base, and then I did the regular, it was a worsted weight base, but I used DK weight yarn for it, and it worked out fine. And there's a Manhattan hat light, which uses a sport base yarn. And I have leftover yarn from this sweater. That I'm wearing right now the Kelly crew neck I actually have I bought the sorry to go back on this sweater but I bought the kind of number of skeins that were recommended for this size and I ended up with one full skein that I did not touch at all and then kind of a lot of another skein so I have almost two full skeins of yarn left for from this sweater and so for sure, I think, since it's a sport weight yarn, and I don't really buy sport weight yarns unless it's for like a specific project, I will probably use the one full skein of this yarn for a Manhattan hat light. So that is, that'll most likely be coming up and probably my next beanie. So we'll see when I decide to cast that on. But yeah, brownstone beanie. I, I do have one more skein of like just a skein that I have just one skein of that I want to make into a brownstone beanie. And that one I believe has 430 something yards. Like it's more than 400 yards. And so I could potentially make the adult medium with it or I might just stick with the adult small. Okay, so yeah, so that is another beanie. I'm just, and I'm also really, a, really liking that these work up so quickly because a lot of my projects are all big projects like shawls or sweaters and so having these smaller beanie projects has been really really nice to kind of cleanse the palette a little bit yeah brownstone beanie and then i have one more finished object see i have three finished objects this week and it's because i spent most of my focus on them this week so that i could finish it because they were all pretty close and this one is finished just in time. It is the Yaladay Shawl. I finished it. The Yaladay Shawl by Emily Curtis. I gotta lean back, okay. Here it is. Oh my goodness. Okay, so once again, the Yaladay Shawl by Emily Curtis and the yarn I used is from Explore Knits. It's the four variegated colors from the Winter Solstice collection. And let's, now that all of the colors are in here and it's done, I can, well, once again, say what the colors are. So starting on this end, this is Petrichor. Here is Apricity. This one is Evenfall. And then the last darker one here is Midwinter. And... I'm really happy with how this came out. Oh, and I used the fingering weight 
or I used finger, the fingering weight version of this pattern because the pattern also has a DK weight version. And I really like how this color, the colors look. Okay, let me show. So this uses a two color brioche, but what I decided to do was to, I wanted to try and fade in these colors in some kind of way. And so on this side, you can see it a little better. So I did sections of this one color and then switch to the two color brioche as I bring in the next color, as you can see here. So this is like the first section, the two color section, single, single color section, two color, single color, two color, and then the single color. And I think it came out really nicely. I love how the increases look. There's two sides of this here. I really like how that looks. And I, because of this is a shawl, I did not gauge swatch, although I probably should have because the brioche knitting, the stitches kind of grow a lot if you're not careful. And so they did, and so the final dimensions for this are a tad bigger than the dimensions that the pattern have, has, but I mean, it's a shawl and I'm totally fine with it being this big. Like it's not, it's not like too big either. It's, I think, perfect for, I will most likely, okay, well this morning actually was really nice because it is such a nice shape and size to drape over your shoulders and for it to cover your shoulders, cover your arms, and then, you know, you can still, like, <laughs> it's like a cape. Like, you can still move around and it to not fall off of you. And so I kind of wrapped myself in this this morning when I was knitting. And then also, I want to, oh my gosh, okay, wait. I am planning on wearing it when I go out as a scarf and so I'm still trying to figure out what is the best way to wrap shawls around for scarves and so I'm still playing around with it but I think something like this would be good. Oh, it's so cute! I just make sure that all of the colors are shown here. Yeah, so this is how it looks. I know the colors are like, I am very colorful right now. I would not pair these together, but just wanted to show this here. It is so squishy and soft, and I just kind of want to, I could totally see myself falling asleep wearing this and just kind of using it as a pillow, you know? So, okay, so if you haven't seen my some of my previous podcast videos, I mentioned that I wanted to make, so I wanted to make this shawl with this, these yarn that these yarns the you know the four the four yarns that sounds weird anyway I wanted to make this pattern with this yarn for like when I got so I let me let me back up a little bit so I bought these yarns during the winter solstice like the boxes so it was before because Explore Knits had a pre-order for all the winter solstice colors so I got this before that pre-order because it was during the winter solstice boxes so I got the box that came with one skein each of the variegated colors so when I got that I was like oh what should I make with it and then when the Yolliday shawl came out by Emily Curtis when I saw the pattern I immediately was like I want to make that with this these yarns and so that was kind of already in my head in December was that I wanted to make this with it and then Exploring It's announced with La Mercerie, which is the yarn shop on Bainbridge Island here in Seattle, announced that they were doing a pop-up in Seattle in March. And I was like, wouldn't it be so fun if I made the shawl and wore it to the pop-up event because Exploring It's will be there because it's their pop-up. But Emily Curtis also works at La Mercerie. And so I thought that would be really fun and kind of cool to do and so thankfully I finished it just in time. I will talk more about that pop-up at the end of this video but I am planning on going. It is next weekend and 
I am beyond excited and just cannot wait for it. I'm kind of nervous too, but yeah, so I'll talk more about it later. But the, the plan for this was to finish making it so that I could wear it next week. I think it'll probably be cold next week. I was also like, what if it's not cold enough to wear like a shawl as a scarf to there and I won't be like dying of heat. But it was cold it, and it is cold. I think it will be cold through next weekend as well. But this week will also be cold. It like oddly snowed earlier this week and I think it might snow tonight. So we'll see. But I am, if it does, I am all ready to be nice and cozy for all of the, um, the cold that might come our way. So anyway, so that is, well, I don't want to take it off, but it, it doesn't match my sweater that I'm wearing. But yeah, so this is the Yaladay shawl. I, I'm just, I overall just enjoy making it. It was such a nice kind of meditative knit with all of the brioche knitting, having Oh, the colors look so nice together, like that fade. And it's also not, initially, like it's not really colors that I would choose for myself, but all together, like they're so nice together. And that fade is so good. So, yeah. Do I regret not getting more of any of these colorways during the pre-order? Possibly. But at least I have one of each, and I made this amazing shawl with it. Whew, okay, so that was the holiday shawl. This was a big, this was a big thing for me to finish. I feel like this week, casting off was crazy because it is it grows like as you knit it, it get the rows get longer, and so casting this off was crazy, but totally worth it. So. Oh my gosh, I could look at it forever. The colors are just so good. Okay, but I, I, will, I will put it away now after I squish it. Okay. All right, so those were my three finished objects of this week, which was, I feel really, really happy about to have those things off my needles. And hopefully, well now that kind of feels like it gives me permission to cast on something else, something new. So, but before we get into that, let me talk about the other projects that I worked on but did not finish this week. So I do have a couple. And let me talk about this one first because I did make some progress on this one. So this is the Loop Sweater by Sorella using the Sorella Boucle yarn in the colorway Breckenridge, which is this really pretty gray color. And again, just ignore this blue, blue yarn on top because that was the provisional cast on, which, okay, so I was looking more at the pattern. I think I mentioned it last week or maybe the week before that the pattern is a little bit like, a little strange, like there's some mistakes I think in it. So one of them was, I think I mentioned that the provisional cast on it says to do a provisional cast on, but I don't think, unless I'm, it's, I just glossed over it, but I keep looking through the pattern. It does not say what to do after, like what to do with it, at, you know. It doesn't say anywhere to like pick up for, from the neckline and do blah, blah, blah with it. And I assume that, to, that it would be an I-cord bind off because the hem and the sleeves say to do an I-cord bind off. But I was looking at the pictures for this sweater and it doesn't look like it's an I-cord bind off for the top. And so I kind of wonder if it should have just been a regular like long tail cast on or something and not a provisional cast on. But either way, I will probably just do an I-cord bind off because because why not? Unless I don't like it, but I will probably do an I-cord bind off. So I did finish one sleeve this morning. Here it is, and yeah, it is, the sleeve is worked straight all the way until like the last inch where you do some decreases to make it, I think, just kind of cinch in a little closer for the wrist and then I-cord bind off. And I did make it one inch longer than the pattern states, 
just because I tried it on and it was a little short for my taste. As I've, excuse me, as I've mentioned, I do prefer longer sleeves. And yeah, so I just wanted to make them one inch longer and I think it should be fine. Let me just hold it up here so you can maybe see. Yeah. So it should, let me pull this up so you can actually see where it fits on my wrist. Um, actually, this is kind of hard to do. Yeah, it'll be like right, I think it might hit right at my wrist. And so if I, you know, move around, it might go a little bit, you know, lower than my wrist, but I think it should be fine for this sweater. I'm also worried that I'm going to run out of yarn for this because I don't, I want to also make the body longer than the pattern states. And so we'll see if I only got three skeins of the boucle yarn, so we'll see if it's enough. I think it might be enough because one sleeve took up pretty much half of a skein. So I used, when I, you know, started and did the bot, you know, the yoke and then part of the body, which is I think maybe a couple inches, that was one skein. And then I am on my second skein and half of it finished one sleeve, so I'm assuming the other half will finish the second sleeve. I may or may not need to start the third one just in case to like finish just right at the end of the second sleeve maybe. But that should give me pretty much one full skein left to do the rest of the body. So I think that should add enough length to work out. And so I'm feeling more confident about it. I know that I, I wanted to try and finish this before the the winter tonos for Sorella goes away because it's seasonal, but I don't think I will finish it before then. So we're just going to, I'm just going to hope that three skeins is enough. If it's not, I'll have a cropped sweater, but I don't think it'll be too crazy cropped. So I, I'm not feeling super stressed about it, but yeah, the seasonal, the winter tonals, I believe will be gone in a few days from when I'm recording this. So yeah, there's no way I'm gonna finish this in a few days, but since I finished one sleeve and I know how much that took, I'm feeling better about it. And I'm, I'm liking it. I'm still continuing to like the texture of it. It is light and fluffy, which I, you know, I kind of thought initially that the fabric was going to be kind of bulky feeling or really thick, but it's not, and so that makes me pretty happy and I am looking forward to buying a more boucle yarn which we will also talk about again at the end of this video as part of future plans because Explore Knits is going to be having a having the boucle base available for her next uh, her next pre-order which I am so excited for there's so many colors I want to get in that one as well so as long as this all works out in the end, I'll probably buy another kind of sweater quantities worth of boucle to either make this pattern again because I'll know how much yarn this will use to make or something else if I find another boucle pattern that's out there. So, so yeah, did I even say what sweater this was? This is the loop sweater. I think I said it in the beginning, but if I didn't, loop sweater by Sorella and boucle yarn, Breckenridge. I am making the size extra small, so three skeins is for the extra small size. Okie dokie. So that's been going good. And then my last work in progress this week was one of my test knits, and it is the Corin Coran Cardigan by Rebecca of the Crea Bea. And I made a lot of progress on this. I think last time I only had kind of the, because it's worked bottom up, I think I might have only had this much done, but I've split for the front and back. And I have also joined at the shoulders, the front and back. So now we have armholes and I finished one sleeve. So the version, there's going to be you can choose between having short sleeves, long sleeves, and also a round neck or a V-neck. 
and my version for the test knit is short sleeves and the round neck. Ooh, okay, so yeah, so this is what I have done so far. And it seems like, I mean, I did get a lot done, but also because the whole stitch pattern is like this lace, all around lace, and it's very open, it knits up really quickly. And let me just show the back. I do really like how this lace pattern looks and it's really easy to memorize. So once you kind of like get the pattern memorized, you can just keep working on it and not have to worry about it too much. And what else? So I think, so I made the sleeves according to the pattern which is two inches of the lace and then just the ribbing at the end. But I think I was looking back at the versions that Rebecca has on her Instagram and it looks like her sleeves might be, they definitely look longer and they look longer than two inches. So I was debating if I should rip back and make the sleeves longer, but I tried it on and I think it should be fine. Also because since I did do a tubular cast off and the ribbing and I just like, I don't really want to undo that <laughs> so and I'm fine with it as far as the length of the sleeve so I think it should be okay so all I have left to do now is the second sleeve which I could just finish in a day and then all of kind of the neck the neck band or like the button band and stuff as well so I am almost done with this if I'm good I will probably finish it this coming week because it shouldn't take too long and yeah I think the only thing that might stop me from working on this a bit more is even though the stitch pattern like the stitch pattern is easy to memorize and it's not you know terribly complicated like it's it's pretty easy I think the knit two together which is kind of what helps well the knit two together and the yarn overs I think doing the knit two together I don't know what it is maybe I'm just adding more tension in my hands or like on my needles when I do the knit two together and so it kind of hurts my wrists like I can tell that they start to feel a little like again it's not like it's painful but I can tell that I need to take breaks and kind of stretch things out after a while I guess it gets tight like the muscles get tight so I can't really work on this for very long I've realized this week after working on this so, but I'm almost done. So as far as deadline goes, like we're fine. And yeah, we should be able to finish this pretty quickly. So yeah, one more sleeve and just the button band and neck band. So that's that. I think it'll be a really good project to have or to wear when things are not as cold because, you know, it's, there's a lot of holes in it, but it, it'll be nice if you still want some kind of cover-up. So I think this would be good for wearing when I go back to Hawaii. So my only kind of self-imposed deadline goal for this is to finish this before I go back to Hawaii at the end of March so that I can bring it and wear it there because the weather will definitely allow me to wear this there. And I think it might still be cold here in Seattle in March. So, So that's that. I do want to make a long sleeve version of this as well because it also looks really pretty and so we'll see what yarn I decide to use when that time comes. But I probably won't make it like super soon after I finish this version. And yeah, speaking of yarn, I did not mention yet what yarn I'm using for this. So for this I am using a, the Burnett Softy Cotton Yarn in the color Sandstone, which is a I want to say peachy orange but it's definitely like orange more orange than pink maybe coral would be the right word for me to use so yeah it's a cotton yarn which I think also works well for a design that's like this to be kind of light and and breathable so but you can also make it with wool yarn which I think Rebecca uses for both of her versions so Maybe my long sleeve version, I'll make it with some kind of wool yarn. I have an idea of what yarn I want to use, but I don't want to say it yet because I'm not sure. But anyway, 
short sleeve version coming up real soon for this. I am test knitting the size one. And I did have to size down one needle size for this. So I am using US 7 needles, but of course, you know, it's whatever that gets gauged for you. So yeah, so that's that. Maybe we'll have a finished one of this, or, you know, not of this, but this particular one will be finished in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, test knit, core and cardigan. And that is all of my whips right now, or the ones that I've worked on this past week. So now on to the other half of this video, which I'm excited to talk about. I have some future plans of projects since I've finished kind of a lot of projects recently. There are things that I think are kind of really in the front of the list of things that I want to make. And so I want to show them here. And maybe if you want to help me out, you can let me know which one you think I should start next or which one you, maybe you've also knitted it and loved it and think I should make it next or, you know, any thoughts on that. So I have yarn for these projects, of course. And so I will show them as well as say what I'm planning on. So first off, I, let me grab this yarn. Okay. Can you believe that I have not made an Andrea Mowry pattern yet? So I've been, honestly, when I first started my knitting journey, when I first started my knitting journey, I haven't heard of Andrea Mowry. And only recently, like I think within either the past year or maybe like less than that is when I heard about her. Actually, I probably heard her name and just didn't make any kind of connections to what her patterns were and stuff, but I've definitely seen other people make her patterns. And I guess nothing, nothing really stood out to me, but there's this one pattern that I really want to make and I just never, I couldn't think of the yarn to, that I would want to make for it. And I finally have some yarn that I think would work perfectly. So I want to make the birch pullover and I'm thinking about making it with this yarn. It is Woolberry in the colorway I Smell Snow in the Berry Natural Base. And so it is this, I don't know how to describe this. It is a kind of muted gray blue with very like faded hints of like a rosy pink in there. Maybe if I took off the label, like these kind of see those color streaks in there here. Kind of has some purpley like mauve vibe in there as well. And I think that this would look really pretty for the birch pullover. I think it's an all over, is it fisherman's rib, half fisherman's rib? And yeah, I just, I wanna make the birch pullover and I have enough of this yarn and I think it would look really pretty. So that is plan number one. It is also one that I just thought about this past week. So it's very much in the front of my mind about using this for a birch pullover. So that's kind of future project plan number one. And then this one I have been wanting to make since I think the pattern, when the pattern was released and I saw it, this is another Andrea Maori pattern, which is crazy. I just wanna make all of the Andrea Maori patterns now. The big cozy cardi. I want to make it so bad, but I just couldn't figure out what color combinate, what yarn combinations I wanted. So, I know what I want to use for the main body portion of the Big Cozy Cardi. I want to use this yarn. It almost looks similar-ish to the one I just showed, but I promise it's different. Let me... It looks similar, but it's, it's different. So this one is definitely more of a... Actually, yeah, it is pretty... Sim it's similar. There's, I think it's definitely more of a rosy pink in here but there is also hints of a purple blue and overall kind of like taupe color.
But this is Labian Ame, Labian Amy yarn in, it is the Merino Twist base in the color Jinju. And I bought this from La Mercerie when they, it was, I think their opening weekend. And I got four skeins of this, which I think is the perfect amount to make the big cozy cardi. So I'm thinking about making it like the main body part with this. Like I'm almost certain that I want it to become that. My biggest problem was I don't know what Surrey yarn to use for that like really cozy looking neckband part of the big cozy cardi. So I was thinking about using this mauvey pink color. This is the, so okay, brand Autumn and Indigo Fibers. It is Surrey Silk Colorway Rosewood. So I'll hold these two together so you can see it. And yeah, so I'm still, I have, here's the thing. I think I have four or five skeins of this Surrey because I was, I bought it to make a cumulus blouse or something similar with it. But I think I will only need to use two skeins of this to make the big cozy cardi. And so I will end up having some leftover skeins of the Surrey, which I'm honestly fine with. But also, what if, I don't like, I sometimes I think I like this color combo and then other times I'm like, do I wanna change it to something else? And I was thinking, what if I got some Surrey from the Explore Knits Seattle collection to pair with this? Like I think that there might be a kind of like gray purple color that might go well with this, or I could go with that kind of bubblegum pink color to go with this, I'm not sure. But either way, so even if I get those, the new Surrey to make it with this and it doesn't match, or I don't like the match, you know, I'll probably just stick with this one. Actually, this looks like it'll be okay too. So anyway, Big Cozy Cardi, definitely the main body I'm going to use this Jinju colorway for, and then the Surrey is just kind of up for, up for discussion still. So, but that's kind of the plan for now. It's what I'm thinking about. I really want to make it, and I want to make it before it hits summertime where it's going to be too hot to wear. So we'll see, we'll see how far we get. And then, I think I mentioned this last week when I talked in acquisitions that I got this skein of yarn from Woolberry, the mornings at the coffee shop in Berry Natural DK. And I said that I forgot what my plans were for these skeins because I got a huge sweater quantities worth. And then I had an idea and I forgot what the pattern name was. So now this week I was prepared I remembered to write it down. So I want to make the No Sweatshirt by Park Williams, which has a hood. It'll be my first sweatshirt with a hood that I knit. And so I think that'll be really exciting. So that's the current plans for this skein of yarn. I think it would look really good since it's like somewhat, you know, it's not like a cable or textured knit. I think it's actually reverse stock knit, which I also haven't made something reverse stock knit before. So that should be really fun. And I think that that always looks pretty good with variegated yarns. So I'm excited to see how that will look up. And I'm excited to also use the Berry Natural DK base because I have used the fingering weight natural base from Woolberry and loved it. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to also like the DK weight version, but yeah, just excited to work with it and like actually see how the DK weight feels on the natural base. Okay, and then the last one I've also mentioned before, but it is something that is is on kind of like the top of the list of next things to make. And that is the Hemlock Sweater by Winter's Weather Knits. In this color, so Woolberry in the colorway stash. Again, so this is the Berry Natural DK base, and then I will pair it with the same colorway in the berry surrey base. 
I think that'll look really nice. I've realized that I'm leaning towards a lot more browns this year for some reason, and so I'm excited for that. Like, that'll be really fun to have more, more browns in my wardrobe. And this is specifically, if you're looking at the labels, this is, I did not buy Stash from when it was part of the collection last year, but it is, it came back for the, was it January? The January Woolberry, what is it called? Like the favorites? Or, she, you know, every month this year she'll bring back a colorway. And that is, that, that was my order for January. Okay, so yeah, so those are the, were those four projects? One, two, three, four. Four projects I have kind of right at the top of my list of next things to cast on. So if you don't mind, let me know in the comments down below which one you think I should start next and we'll kind of see which one, which one I do cast on next. And then just really quickly to kind of end off the video, I do want to just talk about some of the yarn pre-orders that are coming up really soon that I need to plan for because I, I want to buy the yarn, all the yarn, but I have not been doing well this year for my goal of buying less yarn or at least, you know, using more yarn than I am buying. But there's so many good collections coming out, but I do want to make sure I sit down and plan so that I can try my best to make sure I'm only buying things that I really, really, really feel like I can't live without. So anyway, there's a couple collections. The Paisley Knits Gods of Olympus pre-order is starting tomorrow, and I think she plans on having that open for a week or a few days or whichever, wherever she went once she reaches like her limit. But that collection is amazing. And last year it was her club collection, and so I joined the club I think in March, and so I didn't get January or February's colors. Initially, I didn't want to join the club because Mystery Yarn just kind of scares me a little bit, but I love how she dyes her yarn. The colors just are so nicely blended, even though they're variegated. Like, I really like how she dyes her yarn. I don't know how she does it. And when I saw January and February's colors, that's when I decided, I was like, okay, I want to join the club. And so I did for the rest of the year. So initial plans, I think I want to buy January and February's colors because then I can kind of have, you know, a complete collection of last year. But she also has, I think, an additional three colors that were not part of the club last year. So I don't, I, I think I'd be okay without getting those. Like, I just kind of want to have all of, like, whatever was from the club last year to complete that collection. And I do like January and February's colors, so that's kind of, you know, cool with me. And then there is a specific pink and green colorway. I believe it's Persephone that I love. Like when I got that skein in the mail, I don't know what month it was, but when I got it, I knew that I wanted to get more of it. And so that might be my one potential sweaters quantity or... So the great thing about Paisley Knits, she has a lot of great bases that I don't really see other yarn dyers have. And so, well, the one in particular that I really, really like and I did buy and use to make a sweater with was the Baby Alpaca base. And I, I believe she calls it Sailing Sport. So it is a sport base. Love how that base looks and how it knits up and how the drape of the final product is on that. And so that base is really great. She also has in this collection some non-superwash bases, which I've been starting to really enjoy from like for example Woolberries non superwash the natural base really like those and so I also really want to try the ones from Paisley Knits as well and then she has a new bulky base called Cloud that I also really want to try so so I 
I don't really know what I'm going to do yet. I know, you know, again, I want to get January and February's color and then more of that Persephone color. But I, I do want to get one skein of the cloud base. I think I could probably make a beanie out of it since I've been enjoying beanies. I think that would be fine. And so yeah, so we'll see. Of course, when I decide and or when I get the order in, I'll show you what my end decisions were, but that is kind of my current plan for that. And then for the next kind of really big, really, really big collection, or well, not really big, well, it's kind of big, okay. Explore Knits, her Seattle collection, which is going to be at Bainbridge Island this coming weekend, so one week from now. And in either the week after that, or maybe two weeks after that, she will have her National Parks collection coming out, which will have the National Park colors plus tonals to match them, and it's just insane. So, so first with the Seattle collection, there's going to be six tonals part of that Seattle collection and all of it was kind of like revealed on Instagram. La Mercerie like posted them and they're all so good and I absolutely need to have the pink colorway called Gumwall. I need to have it and my main problem now is do I get just Surrey? Am I going to get it in Surrey plus the fingering? Should I get a DK weight version too? I don't know. So but Mm, the Surrey looks so good and I love Surrey. And then also the other tonals. Again, like I'm a pink person and so like the darker greens and blues or then there's a really nice like fog blue and gray color. I, they just are, they, I am drawn to them. There's something about them. The good thing is that they are going to have mini sets of the Seattle tonals, and so I will most likely be getting a mini set since buying buying sweater quantities for each of those colors is I should not do, right? So mini set will be, you know, I can get all of the colors and just have, at least I can have something of all the colors and it won't be breaking the bank. So, so yeah, so that's kind of like initial plans, number one for that. And then she's also bringing some other previous colorways to the store for that day and I it's going to be it's going to be hard to plan for this because I just want it they look so good in Surrey but am I just going to buy all the Surrey I probably want some in the fingering weight base as well what if there's some DK weight sweater patterns I want to make I don't know so so anyway so that's kind of my thoughts right now for that but I am planning on going next week. It's going to be, I think, so much fun. And I just, I can't wait. I can't wait. Also to meet, to meet her, Allie, from Explore Knits, like in real life. I'll just be kind of like fangirling. Oh, and I'm going to bring my, my holiday shawl there. So yeah, hopefully get to talk with Emily there as well and show her my holiday shawl. Oh, okay, and then yeah, as I've mentioned, the Explore Knits National Parks pre-order collection. I really, really want the Joshua Tree colorway because, as you can probably predict, it's the one that's the most pinky, and so really need to have that colorway. But I need to find a project for it so that I know exactly how much and what kind of base to get them on. And then for the tonals, she's going to have the boucle base available. And as we've maybe have known, as you've noticed, that I really like the boucle base so far. And so I'm hoping before that pre-order happens, I can finish my boucle sweater and kind of feel it out and see, you know, what I size up in the sweater. So I need more, more skeins of it to make it again in, you know, the other Explore in its colors. Or if there's new patterns that come out before then with boucle base, like just to plan that out so I know how much skeins of the boucle to buy. But yeah, the, all of the colors have not been revealed yet. So, you know, things can change, but I'm definitely getting that Joshua Tree colorway. There's also non-super wash bases available for this. And she's shown pictures, thankfully shown pictures of the colorways on like all of the bases, including 
the non-superwash base. So that has been really good in helping me kind of like plan. So, so we'll see, but I'm pretty sure I will be getting some boucle base from that collection. Okay, so that was a lot about future plans, but I thought it would be fun to share because I, since, yeah, since I've casted off some number of projects that it might be time to cast on something new and I would like to know what your input is on that. Okay, so, whoo, my voice is telling me that I have been talking for almost an hour now. So that will be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was, I feel like a bit more chatty than the normal ones, just because I'm sharing my plans and stuff with you all. And next week, since next week is the Explore Knits pop-up at La Mercerie happening on the Saturday, I don't know if I will have time to film next Saturday, so I may film next Sunday and try to get it out by Sunday. If not, I'm not totally sure, you know, if I will post next week or just wait until the weekend after that. But fair warning, or maybe not a warning, but I will for sure be showing what I get from the pop-up, and I think it might end up being a lot of yarn. But it's going to be a lot of pretty yarn, so yeah. So keep an eye on that. The next video will be with I will be showing what I get from the Explore Nets pop-up next weekend. Whew. Okay, so I feel like that was a lot. We'll end it here. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really love when you guys comment down on like what projects you're working on when you listen or watch this podcast because again, it always gives me really great project ideas, which I'm in, I am in need of. So because there's a lot of new yarn that's coming out. So let me know in the comments down below if you don't mind sharing what you're working on. And if you want to follow me on my Instagram, I feel like I've been, I've been getting better. It was one of my goals this year to post a bit more on my Instagram and to not forget to post my finished object pictures and maybe sometimes my works in progress as well. You can follow me on my Instagram my handle is at Airy Knits. It's the same name as this podcast. And also feel free to subscribe if you'd like to to this channel so that you can, yeah, just keep keep on keep on track on when I post videos, which is most likely every I film mostly every Saturday and, and try and post them every Sunday. But yeah, with that, I hope you're having a great day, whichever day you're watching this hoping that it is nice and cozy where you are so that you can wear all the knits and make sure that you take some knitting breaks, some crafting breaks, stretch out your hands, your wrists, your arms so that you can just keep on knitting forever. And I will talk to you all next time. Bye.